uh, guys, gonna roll. Uh, it's been official now. After so many news making the rounds, it's gonna be sacked. It's going to stay this and that, but it's been official. Gonna roll has like official, official. Yeah, it's official. <laughs> you know, his okay. contract has been um, mutually terminated by the NFF, so he's no more the manager of the Super League national team. Um, in as much as it's sad for someone to lose his job, mm-hmm. but he's living as uh, the longest serving manager of the Super League national team. 58 matches played, 31 wins, 14 loss. I mean, over 50 percent uh, win rate if you mm-hmm. look at the calculations. But I mean, how did you see this news for you? How did you take this news when, when you heard it? <clears throat> I mean, um, so it was it was sacked like a thousand at one time. So, um, so I felt relief, oh, really? not because I didn't care about another man and his job. No, I just felt I think this man has gone through a lot. Okay, I'm not a big fan of getting raw, and I think he deserves to go. I mean, I didn't think they were supposed to give him that new contract personally, uh-huh. but I think emotionally, this guy has gone through a lot. This guy. <laughs> I can't just imagine his wife and his kids arguing him now because we really the Nigerian media, some part of Nigerian media, yeah. have been very unforgiving to General. And like I said, I felt belief for him. Just rest. And Bolo, for you, how was this news like? Was it like a surprise to you? And you know, was this something you saw coming? And uh, a good decision for you? You know, if you put it. Yeah, it was a very belated move. Let's. We, we. I think we all agree with that. It, should, it was something that should have done a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back to what Lamit said as well. His contract should have been renewed in 2020 because that's what brought us to where we are now. It's four less than four weeks to Afcon, and you know, we're just getting a new. We're in a mess. It's not. It's not the best of circumstances, but I mean, it had to be done. All right, so finally, he's gone over uh, 64 months in charge of the national team. Now, let's talk about the man who comes in to replace him. How be it on the interim, Augustin Eguavon? Um, you know, he's he's been there. He's been in around. He was uh, the technical director before. Yes. Uh, but now, he's the technical advisor of the Super Eagles. just call him the manager. <laughs> <laughs> How be it on, on the interim? But uh, for you, has it, has it been... Would you... Has it been a local coach for you? Would you want it to be a local coach or you you lean towards the foreign manager angle? But do you is it a, is it your preference, a local coach to come in and take charge of the team? Yeah, I said in a few episodes ago that my preference was a an indigenous manager. Why? Because he's more familiar with the players, he's more familiar with the problems with the national team at this moment. He knows what the national team needs right now. And you know, um having a, an indigenous manager has its perks because there's the there's no communication barrier you know someone who can speak to them in local tongue and you know get try to get the best out of these players because mm. we're in very dark circumstances we're in a desperate circumstance right now in nigerian football and we need an immediate reaction we need the team to show much more hunger and spirit than they have in the last few um games and you know i think an, an indigenous coach is the kind of person that can bring out that kind of um, emotion from the players and you know, for, for before I get to you, Lamid, for me, um, he's been there, like I said. Yes. He's the, you know, he's been in Nigerian football. Yeah, this is his he thought spell as super yeah, good. You know, spell. He knows the system. Uh, he's been technical director. You know, he's been in and out or with, around General's uh, decision making team yes, and yes. all that. So so close to a major tournament. So I think um, Eguavo might just be that uh, likely likely pick. You know, to just manage the team. Yes. You know, looking at the outcome. But Lamid, for you, is it the local manager for you or you? wanted to see a foreign manager lead the team no i mean i just wanted them um, so i also wanted a local manager but i didn't just want any local manager you know mm. or there's someone that that was good enough i mean we're going to go through a guavon right now we're going to as the show progresses we'll act if it's good but i mean i wanted a local coach but not just any coach let's just let's just say uh, so um uh, when raw left uh penny came out to say something that um they, are, they don't want a disaster to happen. And uh, he practically lost the dressing room. You know, disciplinary issues amongst the squad and all that. You know, Pin- you know Pinnick was a legend to all this uh, and all that. That was why they had to make this decision of letting Genero go. Now, Eguavon has come, you know, he's in now. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's going to be uh, handle the team. Uh, do you think he's, uh, he's someone who could instill discipline amongst this player? Because for me, I get this feeling that complacency... Are beginning to set in for these players. A few, some of them feel they are indispensable, you know. So, do you think Aguavon is that man to, you know, bring that uh, discipline in the team? You know, bring the dressing room together, manage the egos of these players and all that. Personally, this is why I feel. Yeah, I feel that excuse by Pinnick was. 
I feel that excuse was just was just talks. Yeah. This indiscipline stuff. Okay, you were cool with this dude. Two matches. Be- you were cool with this guy before we lost one nil, right in Lagos. Everything was smooth. There was nothing like a sack. And all of a sudden, when people come up with those things, it just pisses me off a lot of times because it was it was surprising to me as well for him. Because to come you don't make those kind of statements. See, they were trying to get rid of this guy, and for me, I felt this was this is not just the typical sack. I think there were a lot of powers involved mm-hmm. in this yeah. sack. This is not just. I think someone and really there was really, a conflict of opinion. You know, well. I think someone just realized that look, this guy has to go. And. Please spare me this indiscipline stuff. Spare me that. That is absolutely for me. I I don't believe that right now. So again, Eguavo, um, can can you repeat the question one more time? So do, do, you know, do, do you think he can just, he can manage the ego of of these players? You know, most of these players feel they are big players for their club side. They are regulars, <laughs> and you know this complacency in my setting. So do you think Eguavo is that man to manage this problem? What egos? Really, I'm looking at the squad and I'm like, I don't need to be a Kong's guy to know that Kong is literally down to earth. Balogun saw the interview. He looks like someone that does not really care. He just want to work. Osime is Osime. So I'm looking at the egos they are talking about and I don't understand, honestly. Like, okay, so players might feel like their position have been very, very safe. Probably too safe. You know? Who are those players? Indeed, it's probably going to start under any manager. You know, there have been alleged talks that uh, Balogun is one player. You talked about Balogun, but you know, he's one player that Too stands safe. his ground. Okay, so you know, who that, you play? You know, so stands his ground, doesn't you know give in easily. You know, he speaks his mind. Exactly. You know, we've seen reports. We've seen, yeah. Okay. You know, he talks a lot. You know, if th- he does. You, you want that guy in your team, right? Yeah, I think it, it, it helps to some extent. So I mean, so when we say these things like um, egos, and I'm looking at those players really and. If I think I think one of the things that that this for me personally I think they like is <laughs> probably guys with lots of egos, you know. There's some there's some matches where you step onto the field and your opponent should feel that you feel your presence and maybe you are the super ego. You guys should impose yourself. These guys don't do it, they are so down to earth and honestly the ego stuff will not fly with me. I don't I don't I don't want to do that. That's not that's not an excuse. Um Bolu, uh the the uh, if you look again a raw, he's not imposing enough. You know, it, it, that's his personality. Yes, that's his. Yes. You know, we can't we can't force that on him. But um, a, a manager like Eguavon comes in into that dressing room. You know, he's been there. You know, an ex international. He's played the game. He knows the system. He's Do you think it. he commands that that presence in the dressing room? Do you think he'll be able to manage these players? I mean, you know, egos are in dressing rooms. Yes. I don't know. I I quite disagree. I mean, now there are some players that. Yeah. You know, they just feel the top, some certain way. Yeah, certain they just feel some certain way. So do you think Eguavon is that man to just manage the dressing room very well? Yeah, I think certainly someone who has been there and done it before. He has been, he has literally been in this player's shoes and he knows what they're probably going through. You know, he has been there as a player, won the AFCON, been there as a manager several times. He was, he was there as manager in 2006, he was there as manager in 2010, now he's here in 2021. So, I mean, 2022. So he knows, you know, he knows what the super egos. He knows the kind of mentality that should be in the super egos, and he, he understands, you know, the um the weight of pressure on them. Yeah. And I think a, a different voice would, you know, it could make a difference. You know, it's, it's a very little detail where it could make all the difference in the super egos. Having to listen to someone who knows what the standards should be, and you know, he's he's not taking any prisoners. He knows what should be done, and he's he's insistent on the standards that should be in the super egos. I think that could really make it a difference for us because we have a very young squad. You know, yeah. a squad that is willing to learn that could be adaptable and. You know, having someone like him who who does has that aura of and you know the, uh, most of these players in the current squad you know they've always known him as technical advisor so that respect is already there you know and then coming to, to the dressing room and to speak to them as their manager i think that could make a slight difference for them now before before we continue on the government, let's let's talk about the players now would you abstain the players of any blame we always uh, tend to go to the managers you know the manager takes the blame you know he's, he's finally left he's gone <laughs> Uh, do you think some portion of the blame should go to the players for maybe letting Genero down, you know, in some particular games? I mean, we saw the Serie Leone game, you know, you were 4 nil up. Do, do you see an excuse? We don't want to make an excuse for Ro. I mean, he's not the one on the pitch. You know, we need characters on the field. We need players to step up when you've been needed. You know, we saw the Serie Leone game, 4 nil up. At the end of the day, it was a point, 4-4. 
some other games, the games to we lost to CR in Lagos and all that. So would you want to um, exempt the players of any blame? Before for me, I think they should take some portion of the blames as well. Of course, football is a team sport, and you know one party can't work, and you say the other party is not working for the for us to be blaming the manager of whatever mistakes or errors he has made or whatever um, shortcomings he has. Part of it also has to go down to the players because they are the ones who carry out these instructions on the pitch and the ones who kick the ball and run around. So I think, well, of course, General has most of the blame. He's the one who gives them instructions. He's the one who tells them what to do. He's the one who organizes the training sessions and all that. But I think um, also the players can also, all they have to do is, you know, take to instructions and do what they've been told, really. But, you know, there's always, for the players, there's always, there's always that feeling of, yeah, I could have done more to, you know, help the manager. I could have done more personally. But I think that's an individual thing. But the team, in general, you have to actually blame everyone because everyone had a part to play in it. The fact is, uh, Gennett Roy is similar to Ole. You know? <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever it got difficult in a match and you need a tactical input from the yeah, coach. You need, a, you need a, 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 an active yeah, you mind. Get, and, and you need something extra. Okay, now this is where you earn your money as a coach. When you need to think out of, uh, outside the box, you know, most of the time it was always found one. It was, it was never yeah. proactive. You know, I mean, like I said, I have a player of Eguavon, obviously, because I don't think he's the right man. But Eguavon will not change. Eguavon will not take out Moses Simon for Shio Abdullah. That decision <laughs> would always live with me to see that I leave this planet. I think I felt that decision, one of the decisions I was, I was like, nah, that's it. Like, nah. All right. So, go. you know, you know, Eguavon, he was, like I said, on the interim from technical director to technical advice and now let's let's look at the team he'll be working with now like i said he's, okay. he's been named the technical advisor mm-hmm. um uh, salisu yusuf according to nff is will now be the head coach of the team uh joseph yobo is still there and assistant as an assistant coach we also have paul aibogun he's been in around the team of course he's managed the under 20 under 20 national team uh he's also an assistant coach then uh dr Terry Egwaoji. I mean, this might be a new name to most most of yeah. everyone who, yeah. who might be watching it. You know, is is also among uh, the coaching setup. I mean, as well. And uh, we also have Aloy Agu as the goalkeeper trainer. Yeah, it's always also, been there. Also. Always been there as well. So, um, looking at this team, obviously Salis Yusuf. We know he's had issues before bribery mm-hmm. and all that. He's back at the team now as the head coach. Aik Bogun, he didn't he didn't cover himself in glory mm-hmm. in the under twenty World Cup. They did, you know, they performed so poorly and all that. Now, uh, looking at this team of mm-hmm. coaches, what what can you say? What do you make of these people being put together? Is, is it deserving for you? Are they are they the right fit to assist Eguavon in this job moving forward? Um, looking at them individually, I mean, from Salis Yusuf to Joseph Yobo, Paul Aibogun, the new man who came in, Dr. Terry Ogoje, and the goalkeeper trainer, Aloy Agu. What do you make of this team in general? So, I mean, when you sack a manager, yeah, yeah you expect to bring someone else with different ideas. Because in this case, it's very ironic because <laughs> these are the same <laughs> set of people basically that have worked with Raw. But funnily enough, you, like know? you mentioned um, Nigeria is a similar situation with Ole. Well, actually, it's a very similar situation to when they sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Karik stepped up as the senior, mm-hmm. as the head coach. It was still the same. Basically, same setup. Staff, but then... Uh, Still the, the same thing is, the thing is, in situations like this, you know, um, it's always a matter of opinion. A, a difference in opinion, a difference in voice, a difference in tone of voice might also make the difference. But, but, because it was the same, it was essentially the same coaching staff, but then they played a bit differently in those three games that Carrick was man, manager. And, you know, you they didn't like, play differently. I know they, they just got different bit, results. They were, they, they were a bit different. They were the same. They, they, tried the there same was thing. a little different performances in the level of performance. No, nope. I, I actually disagree. They were, <laughs> in, in, let's, it was let's, the same. Let's, let's talk about Salus Yusuf. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this talk that with the whole bribery thing and everything, I mean, he was caught on camera. You know, he was he's back in the team yeah. uh, to assist General, but General yeah. has gone and he's still there mm-hmm. and as the head coach. I mean, so. See, the old bribery thing, like I'll say, yeah, I want people where I think, I mean, people make mistakes. Yeah. And you're not supposed to flog someone for making a mistake all his life. I mean, it's self this punishment, right? Yeah. So it's natural to give you an opportunity. I mean, no one is a saint here, so I'm not even going to blame him for that. But, I mean, what is the difference between Salisu Yusuf and Eguavon? 
okay, this is, I genuinely want to know because I have no idea. So, Sadiq is the head coach. Like, for you to promote him, that means he did well. Because you can't just literally put him there. So, why is Salisu Yusuf there? Why is Joseph Yobo there? Because if you are sacking in a row, those guys are were literally part of his team. Like, what are those guys doing there? I mean, this is like common sense. This is not even... That's why I, the reports I'm seeing of probably... Um, okay, this is... I mean, it's just, it's just a report, so I don't think it's necessary to say it. But I think this is a very, very tricky situation. This, is, this does not look like something that was planned. This looks like something that was rushed. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know the plan behind these guys. I really don't know. I think this is setting up for a disastrous Afghan tournament. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say this now. I probably hope that we win. Yeah, you know. But we, I all, think we, all, we all hope. I hope we win. That we win. But this is setting up as one dramatic tournament. Well, um, coming back to what you said, you know, um, it would be even more dramatic if you had a total overhaul of because we're like I said earlier, really? we're four weeks we're four weeks to Afcon. I mean, they made it four weeks. They it would have been two months before. <laughs> yeah, they, they made could it have gone earlier. Four weeks or two months, they, they still wouldn't have enough preparation time because no. they don't. There's no friendly game. There's no warm up game. It's just straight to the first game. Have played game. Our maybe, maybe why they, they, they you know choose a because qualifiers. he's familiar with the players familiar because of no players. no. Okay, so what is the difference between Guava and Raw? They're, they're, they're two different people. They're always different opinions. That's one thing uh. about football. Even an assistant coach would have different opinions with coming from his um, senior. And that but has, the reason that why you were assistant several years all your football. life, there's a reason. But that doesn't mean he passed his coaching badges. <laughs> and, no, I, mean, yeah. I think I think a more, go back to my point, I think a more disaster situation would have been bringing different people with different ideas. People want, probably want to change the training, the training system, different, you know, they want to make different decisions and all that. I think that would have been even more tough to navigate in this crucial situation because we're going into a tournament situation. We need, you know, we need to know what we are doing. We can't just go there and, you know, someone is trying to change up how they've always been doing and all that and all that. I think it's good where we have people who have been there before <laughs> that know the operation of the team and, you know, and they can always, they can just, all they have to do is just change a few things. That's from their own personal opinions. Change a few things about the team, change a few things about tactical setup and all that. And, I think I think it's it's not it's not an ideal situation. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's not yeah. an ideal situation, but I think it's it's much better than going in there with people who have no ideas about what the players are like, or people who have no ideas about what the team was always like in the last few years or during the qualifiers. Is it is it is it a situation that let's just stick with Eguavo and see what comes out of the Afcon? What does it bring to the team? Yes, like I said, he's he's been in and out. I mean, he's he's played the game for the team. You know, represented them Nigeria at the nineteen ninety four. 98, 98 World Cup took them to the 2006 half point. That's our DNA. You know, yeah, they came Todd. <laughs> uh, you know, like like we said earlier, Todd Spell in charge of the team. Yes. That what what does it bring different, Augustine Negwavo? You know, you we've we've seen the whole experience managing you know the Super Eagles team. You know, he's also managing he's also local clubs in eight great, in, teams, in, in, as eight great well. teams as well. Yeah. But what do you think he brings different to what General offered? Is he is it is he coming with something different from what we've seen with uh, Gennaro Rosemary at the Super Eagles? Let's let's be honest. That's established that we're in a desperate situation, and I think the the best remedy for this kind of situation is, some, is someone who brings a bit of balance and structure, someone that brings a bit of calmness, not someone that is trying to do things different than Google and who and all that. He's he would just try to bring a little bit of continuity and a little bit of personal touch with his opinions, how he wants things to be done, and. Personally, I think it's much better if there's a Nigerian at the helm than a foreign guy. Especially at this point, because yeah. you know he he understands he understands the pains that the fans go through. I don't think Genaro really connected with the opinions of the fan of the fans, and that's probably because he's not Nigerian. Because you know the the when we always complain about the performances, you know he probably that's why he really always looked at the results, and you know that that emotional attachment to the team, knowing. Knowing the tradition and you know understanding that that pressure that comes with the job and knowing how much how much the fans are expecting from you and how much they want from the team what they actually want to see the team do and I think that's that's what he will bring for us that's the only thing I know I can't really say much about his managerial acumen or anything else but that's the only thing that we're sure that he would he would bring down that structure and continuity a little bit of continuity um okay so uh, before you uh, so it de- also it depends on our goal. Go into Nations Cup. Yeah. So do you want to go into Nations Cup and win? I think that's a very that's a very we are going into every tournament to win. No, no. 
I mean, we are. It's, it's the Super Eagles. It <laughs> is yeah, Nigeria. Yeah. So, so we won it only three times. It's not like it's our bet, right? Okay. So we are going. We are supposed to go into the tournament. What was our objective? Okay. What is Kenan Abiem um, Eguavon's objective? What What is his target? Is it to win the Afcon? As much as I think Eguavon is not the right guy, I think that would be very very unfair. I think that would not be a smart thing for. It should be same target. Win the Afcon. We are going to win to a tournament with, with four weeks That's not to possible. That's, that's not fair. That's absolutely. But, but, but is Eguavon, absolutely is Eguavon coming? Is he coming to build a team? I mean, if going, we have a team already. You know, it's the spine, interim manager. It, but he's not coming to change a lot. He's not coming to change a lot. That became stag- We have a team that became stagnant. Do you, or do you think he's going to come? To because I've seen talk that you know he might come in, bring one or two players. I mean, we have we have the spine already. I mean. Looking at goalkeeper, we have a first choice goalkeeper. We have the regular defenders. We, you know, we have. We have a midfield. You know, we have the midfield spine and forward and, as well. So is he coming to? We are so close to the Afcon. So is he coming to change a lot? And the fact that he's been in around the team as well as technical director. So, should, for me, it should be same targets. Go to the Afcon and win it. I don't know what you think, but I for mean, me, that that should be the target. We shouldn't shift the target think, because I don't think it's... any Nigerian will be disappointed if we crash out in the quarterfinals or semifinals. What? I mean, we, we, no, we, no. I mean, I, no, I don't expect. No, let's, let's no, be very honest. No. This is the time so. factor. I don't yeah. expect very him to win the nation's cup. Despite the fact that, not, despite not the fact that that was the mandate for Raw. On that role, it was a situation where, but like, like, um, Amaju Pinning said, it was was trying to avert the disaster waiting to happen. What uh, disaster? Please. I think, I think <laughs> if we had gone to Afcon with Ro, we definitely wouldn't have won it. With the way we were playing football, we definitely wouldn't have won the Afcon. And we shouldn't think the Guavon will come to miraculously change something within four weeks. He's just coming here for damage limitation. Let us let us go to Afcon with our held head held high, and you know, play with some team spirit and show some you know some. Kind of what has been missing in the team, some verve and you know fighting spirit, and I think that would be good enough for him. I mean, let's, let's not put so much pressure on him. What has been missing? He has come in, in at team. a very, at a very difficult circumstances, and we just want to see some good team spirit and really look football that we can be proud of, look, and then you can if it, now hand over to someone who will take it. Team if, it if it was, basis. if it was team spirit, get yeah, rolled to be here, <laughs> if it, bro. These guys, I don't. That's why, I, I, like I said, I think fans are very, very unforgiving. Yeah, know? true. I mean, these guys were. Nothing like it was happening before we lost one year in Lagos, you know? No, but there was always there was there a lot of problem the, with our football. Yeah, I mean, this is from, from that never, very long game, actually. I mean, we've There's never this... played beautiful football in almost 20 years now. What are nah, we saying? Don't say 20 years. We played good football on Akechi. Even in the early oh parts of Rose Reign, the first two years of <laughs> Come on. Did, 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 did you play beautiful football, football, football in, in, in his previous things? Did, I mean, did you play beautiful football? Not beautiful football, football. since nah, 2006. No, but let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Really? African football. Under Akechi, we played some good football. We, we, we won the AFCON playing very well. We also, on that road, we also, in our first, in the first two years of his reign, yeah, first we, beat, few years. we beat Cameroon, we beat Algeria in qualifiers. I mean, we, we, we put some very good performance. But what's the definition of but good football? Became football. I mean, do we want to win or want to play good football? If we can every do both, fan, every fan wants to, I mean, every, every fan wants to win playing good football. No, really? Yes. You think the Atletico Marie fans care about that? <laughs> For but me, I, 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 I don't see some goals and... I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think of. a good form you know, brings that beautiful football we are all craving for, but we, we just need to keep <laughs> our fingers crossed. Proud of and when people hands. crave, sorry, of. sorry, when people crave beautiful football, they must have been teams where they get used to winning, you know, like, oh, we want too much now, we want beautiful football. We are not in that, we, are, we don't have that luxury to demand beautiful but football. We, have, but we, have we want very, to we win have also. Good players to do it. We have like the Algerian, like the Cameroonians, like the Moroccans, you are not you special. Know, you know, the difference between us and them is just the coaching, you know, they have, they have very good players. Almost the same quality as the, Thank as you. the players we have right now. We don't. We we're, we're at that point. We're at the level of like you mentioned, Morocco and all those other teams. We have, if not similar or better players to the, the quality of players those guys have. And it's not so much as for some good football that we can. I'm not saying we should go and start playing ticket tackle, playing like Man- Manchester City, but something that we can be proud of. You know, we have very good players. The players we have are European quality players. Players are starting in. Top no. sides in Europe and it's hold it, hold it, hold it. Very careful. Very careful. <laughs> we have careful. players, yeah, but yeah, I mean, we, we should, we should, players, but that's we should, about we should it. be careful with the way we we, we raise these players, raise the bar for these players. <laughs> yes, they are good players, but we should be careful. You know, st- uh, sticking with Eguavon and the appointments made, um, like we've touched on the assistant coaches and the coaches. Now there are some ambassadorial appointment <laughs> as well. Uh, well that's, some that's some, every, some every former tournament. former player, ex players, mm. uh, Juan Kanu. It's part of those uh, ambassadorial team that would assist the team, you know, moving forward. Assist we also have them. we also have JJ Okocha as well as a part of this ambassadorial team and uh, Garba Lawal. 
you know, these three former internationals. We also aid Eguavon and his coaching team, you know, moving towards the AFCON in terms of preparation and all that. But looking at this ambassadorial appointment, has it, has it always worked out for you? You know, what's, what's, what's the real importance? I don't, you know, with all, the, all these players, you know, should, getting ambassadorial appointment. I don't think we waste time on this too much. Sorry, I mean, I don't think we should. I, let me talk on behalf of Bully. <laughs> let me, I really want to talk on behalf of Bully. Um, they should do their thing. You know, like, we are not going to argue. We know why they are there. I mean, what does they, what does that mean? Ambassador for who? So, let us leave them this way. Do your thing and that's about it. I don't think we should... Because we, we we lack information because we actually do not know what these guys do. Or did well, I just speak I, too I mean, early for no, you? No, do you they, know what they do? They always they always there's always a team of legends that accompany oh the team God. to every continental. That's tournament. what I'm saying. Like, do you know what the way it's been put out? And there's ambassadorial support the team, for the yeah, crew. Yeah, for, okay, so what does the, that mean? With, with the team as well as with <laughs> no, please, the what fans. does that mean? No, it, with the team, I mean they, they they have access to the dressing room and to speak with the players and give them support. Okay, so morale as well as yeah, morale. So what's as well as ambassadorial with the fans doing the tournament. So we just hope this this turns out to be uh, like like I said, maybe mm-hmm. it's just um damage control, like you said earlier. You know, let's just get someone to manage the team moving forward for the AFCON. I just have this feeling that the NFF are looking towards the World Cup. Whatever comes out of the World AFCON qualification. Qualification <laughs> rather. You know, that was me being you know <laughs> being too forward there. You know, we still have the playoffs to you know to go with. But I mean it's just a case of the NFF, whatever comes out of the AFCON, you know, foreign manager is in place, you know is what they are looking at rather not in place what they are looking at Eguavon is there on the interim so we just hope he, he, you know it works out well and, and all that but uh finally guys quick one quick one what are your chances for the super egos with Eguavon heading to the afcon where do you see the super egos uh finishing at the afcon do you think we can win it third place uh one better than the last time and all that semi-final third place semi-final we get out of the semi-final and win the third place no we lose the probably beats guinea third place Bully for you. What's what's the what's the target for anything from the knockouts? I'm okay. I don't want to put too much expectation. Anything from knockouts is good enough. Let's just go on to the World Cup playoffs. For me, the target hasn't changed. We should go there and uh, win it. I don't think Eguavon will come in to do too many changes. So it's been there with the team. So the target should remain the same, and we should go on to win the African Cup of Nations right there in Cameroon. All right, guys. So you've heard from the guys. Austin Eguavon, Augustin Eguavon is the new Cerezo. Uh, interim manager, <laughs> interim technical advisor of the Super Eagles team as our preparations are underway for the African Cup of Nations. He will be assisted by Salis Yusuf, Paul Ebogun, Joseph Yobo, and goalkeeper coach is still there, Aloy Ago. Don't forget the new man as well. Probably more like a new man in the setup, Dr. Terry Eguaoje, who is also an assistant coach amongst the team that Eguavon will be taking with to the African Cup of Nations right there in Cameroon. All right, guys, it is still Football Cruise on Ninja Footballers TV. I've been with Bolu and Lamid on the set today. Till we'll come away again next time. Don't forget, keep it locked with us and keep cruising. Bye-bye.